All right, hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 2, Watanagashi. Let's jump back into it. When my drowsiness receded, I started wanting to know why the car was stopped and why I was ordered, why I was ordered, offered coffee. Oishi-san, who had been in the driver's seat, had at some point moved to the back. Suddenly, I had a very bad feeling about this. It reminded me of the questioning yesterday at the library. It was already too late by the time I realized I'd made a mistake. Today, of all days, it didn't look like I would be getting away. I had a feeling that Oishi-san heard what, I, what he wanted to. He wouldn't be letting me go. <laughs> Please don't get all formal on me. I'm not going to eat you or anything. Mayabara-san. Oishi-san gulped down the last of his coffee, then stretched wide, showing me how relaxed he was. That, however, only served to heighten my nervousness. What, what do you mean? Need from me? Need? Oh, no, nothing really. You're going to evade the question at this point? What a deeply unreadable man. Well, I don't need you for anything. I just thought that you might need something from me, Mayabara-san. I don't... I don't need anything. Oh, I see. Really? Are you sure there's nothing? Nifafafafafa. <laughs> There was only one side door in the back seat of this truck. In other words, my only exit was blocked off by Oishi-san. I couldn't get away. I could only limply hang my head and maintain my silence. Oishi-san, despite my reticence, relaxed and began smoking a cigarette. The cries of the insects outside seemed to be growing longer and longer, to an amount of time that almost seemed infinite. Here, I was sure that you had something you wanted to talk to me about. Oishi-san exhaled a puff of smoke. The windows were open, but the tobacco smoke still accumulated inside the vehicle. How much did Oishi-san know? What did he know, and what did he want to hear from me? If finding out the truth made you disappear, then if I told him, would Oishi-san disappear too? I had a feeling that I didn't need to worry about that in this case. I wonder how all this ended up happening. Oishi-san addressed me in a low tone as if he was talking to himself. How all this ended up happening? How the hell should I know? That was what I wanted to know. You know, Jiro Tomotake-san and Beo takano san right? I know you do, because I per personally witnessed you with them during the festival along with Shion Sonozaki-san. Do you know how Tomotake-san and takano san are doing now? They've actually well, passed away. They've met very untimely deaths. Oishi-san probably played that card in order to surprise me. However, I already knew and didn't display the extreme reaction he expected. What's this? Hmm, did you already know? Unfortunately for this question, unfortunately for this question in particular, remaining silent was equivalent to saying yes. Oh, so then did you also know? The reason... Uh, Tomitake-san and Takano-san were cursed like that? People are saying that apparently they went into some forbidden building. The storehouse for ritual implements. That forbidden shed sealing away Hinemizawa's bloodstained past. Where the mistake that started it all happened. Do you know about the rumors? They say that Mayor and Riku Rika Furude-san were cursed because of that too? That would mean it was mine and Shion's fault. He was right. As soon as we revealed what we did. What do they call it? A ritual storehouse? They're saying it was bad luck. The lock to it had been replaced by a simpler one, which made it easier for thieves to get inside. What? This was news to me. Until last year, it apparently had these big bars and a huge padlock on it. I mean, you know... Ever since the priest and his wife passed away, Rika Furude-san has been managing the place, right? Apparently she talked to the mayor saying she wanted them replaced with lighter, more simpler padlock because the bars were too heavy for her. I didn't know anything about those big bars he was talking about, but the lock had certainly been a simpler one. It was a pretty cheap one too, and it didn't really fit my impression of what a lock for a place you'd store something as important as ritual implements would look like. Rika-san is a small girl after all. 
The bars were heavy with rust, and they must have caused her a lot of trouble. So the mayor hired a craftsman and, re and replaced the lock with a simpler padlock, so she could open it with a key. Ooh, excuse me. So, how does that mean it was bad luck? Here's what I'm saying. Thieves couldn't get in with the old tight lock. The mayor and Rika-san replaced it with a cheap lock and a key on their own, so thieves broke into it. Apparently, that's how it was going down. That explanation's a bit... Letting that slide, certain members of the village delivered punishment upon the thieves who stole into the ritual storehouse, as well as the mayor and Rika-san who changed the lock. At least, those are the whispers that seem to be going around. Maya Barasad. Look out, whenever I do that deep voice, I can't stop yawning. What do you think? What, what do I think? I don't really know what you mean by certain members of the village. Are you familiar with the three families? Representatives from each of them gave sort, short addresses at the Watanagashi Festival's opening ceremony. Did you see them? I came partway through the festival, so I don't really... The three families are the three oldest families in Hinimizawa. To give actual names, the Kimiyoshi family, the Sonozaki family, and the Furude family. They each have quite the lineage, it seems. Long ago, it's said that everything in the village was decided by a council of the three families. The Kimiyoshi family, old man Kimiyoshi, meaning the mayor's family. The Sonozaki family was Mian's. So the Furude family was Rika-chan's family then. After the war, the Sonozaki family quickly expanded their influence. Practically speaking, after leading the fight against the construction during the dam conflict, they jumped to the top of the hierarchy in Hinimizawa. You see, though in accordance with the old ways, they still decide important village matters only after consulting with three families. That's why the leaders of the three families each have their own addresses at the start of Watanagashi. In other words, the mayor, the old lady currently in charge of the Sonozaki family, and the last remaining member of the Furude family, Rika-san. I heard that Sonozaki family was pretty high up there. Oh my god, sorry about that. <laughs> I heard that the Sonozaki family was pretty high up there, so Rika-chan's family was just as old? Well, as you're aware, she has no relatives at all. In reality, the Furude family holds up pretty much no influence. However, it seems like people gravitate towards Rika-san on a personal level, and I hear that many of the villagers elderly have blind faith in her. It was certainly true that Rika-chan had an odd sort of charisma, uh, charisma amongst the elders. So, what are you telling about all this and three family stuff for? Oishi-san paused for emphasis, lighting another cigarette. I cannot stop yawning, my god, sorry about that. I've explained a lot, but I suppose it's still not enough. I'm asking because I don't understand. Oyeshi gave me a dry, meaningful grin and blew out another puff of smoke. The members of the three families are disappearing one after the other. That's what I'm talking about. I've read that it's based on some kind of old traditions inherent in Hinimizawa, but I don't know much beyond that. I don't know anything about it either. That's why I'm asking! The leaders of the Kimiyoshi and Furude families have disappeared, so maybe the leader of the Sonozaki family will disappear next. Well, that's just a random idea bouncing around my head at the moment. <laughs> just kidding, really. The leader of the Sonozaki family? Who, who, who is it? The current leader is the old lady at the main house. But it wouldn't be... My god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it wouldn't be incorrect to say practically all the rights of leadership have been transferred to her granddaughter, Mian-san. The visage of Mian giving prompt directions to the adults while searching for Rika-chan sprung back to mind. M mian She's gonna disappear? I hadn't even thought of that possibility. All hair stood on end. That's insane! Nobody wants that, right? Of course not. We we can't allow that. Clamp. Oishi san grabbed my shoulders with both hands. Then help us, Marabara san. Uh. 
If there's anything you've noticed about me on Sonozaki lately, please tell me. I was going along with him. By the time I'd realized, it, it was too late. Oishi-san brought his face in closer, almost close enough to ram into, my, into me, waiting for my next words. This pressure. I can't tear my eyes, eyes away from his. That moment, I heard a beeping sound. It was from the driver's seat. He ignored it at first, but then it started to bother him, so he finally let go of me and leaned into the driver's seat. Hello? Yep, loud and clear. I was saved. Of course, it's not like I could escape through this opening. I see. Yes, all right. Let's head back then. Yes. Okay, okay. Apparently, he was being recalled. Now when I knew I'd be freed, the tension in my body dissipated all at once. It looks like I need to get going. Hmm? We were just getting to the good part too. That's too bad. Oishi-san flung open the door, excited, and walked around the front to the driver's seat. He left the door open. Did that mean I could leave? You really care about your friends, Mayabara-san. And an admirable trait for a kid to have in this day and age. I totally understand that it feels like you'd be betraying them if you told the police anything. I feel like I'm just as tired as him, my god. <laughs> Mayabara-san, it's the middle of the night, so get a good night's sleep and then think about it. Just a little bit of courage from you might end up being what saves many of your friends in the end. Did he want to say that the sacrifices wouldn't stop with Rika-chan and Sotoko? You know this already, but every night since Watanagashi, something has happened. In the past, the curse only occurred once per year, but this time, it's been going on for days. What a prosperous year this has been! I don't think you can call that prosperous. The night before last, last night, and now today. There's no proof that something won't happen tomorrow night as well. It's our job to prevent such things before they happen, but for that, we need your cooperation, Mayabara-san. I looked out the open door to see none other than my own house right in front of me. It creeped me out that he knew my name and address, but I was too sleepy right now. I was too sleepy to care. Well, you're probably tired. It's already three in the morning. Please, get yourself a good rest. Yes, sir. I'll be going now. When I was about to get out of the truck, as if to deliver a parting blow, Oishi-san said in a raised voice. I'll be coming by every day until you feel like talking, alright? I don't believe forcing you to confess in an inter interrogation room is really in fashion these days. I couldn't say anything in response. But me slamming the door shut probably served the same purpose. After lightly beeping the horn, Oishi-san's truck drove off. I went to the front door without waving goodbye. The door was locked, but the chain wasn't up. I unlocked the door and entered. Then walked over to the staircase. That was where I lost consciousness. Higurashi, when they cry. Is that going to be the end of the chapter? It is. All right. From the scrapbook 9, the elder leader of the Sonozaki family. From the scrapbook 10, and request denied. A few new tips. From the scrapbook 9. The Sonozaki family. The one to drastically expand its influence after the war was the Sonozaki family. The leader at the time was Oryu Ori Sonozaki, who still has that seat today. Or you, Sonozaki, has grown old, and today you can only catch a glimpse of who she was at the time. From what I've been told, however, she was a leader extolled as the best in history. Having become so old, aside from going out a few times a week for lessons, she spends her time at home in solitude and seems to leave most of the ceremonial, ceremonial affairs to her heir, Mion. There are different views on why the successor was not her daughter, but her granddaughter, Mion, uh, but it's rumored that it has to do with dis disownment of her daughter-in-law and son daughter and son-in-law. That uninhibited granddaughter, Mion Sonozaki, still shows no signs of the dignity required of the next leader. However, she does have Sonozaki blood in her veins and is permitted the name of demon. She is still doubtlessly she still doubtlessly requires caution 
and is probably hiding her fangs and claws as skillfully as the leaders of the past did. The elder leader of the Sonozaki family. Yes, the postal worker hasn't seen anything either. The Sonozaki main house has their seal hanging from the mailbox so that anyone can stamp their mail or parcels with it and drop it in. Nah, <laughs> that's rather careless of him. So when was she last seen? She was last seen at the Watanagashi opening ceremony greetings. She apparently returned home right after that. Well, she is pretty old. From what I've heard, she goes out a few times a week to take lessons, right? Have you found out? Have you found anything out about that? Every Monday, she goes to the assembly hall to practice the taish, Taishu Goto, but she didn't go this week. Any calls to say she wasn't going to be there? Has anyone confirmed it? No, nobody. She apparently takes days off once a while, though, so no one thought it was strange. Tomorrow, why don't we pretend we're in the town hall and call around 10 o'clock? Please figure out whether she's at home. 10 o'clock? Got it. Ever since it started to seem more and more like Agent Hinamizawa traditions had something to do with all this, he'd been keeping a careful eye on the three families. At this point, the leader of the Kimiyoshi family and the leader of the Furude family had disappeared. There was only one leader left. Or, or you, you, Sonozaki, the leader of the Sonozaki family. She was apparently a pretty old woman. Her dignity hasn't waned, but she still only appeared to appeared before people rarely, so it was difficult to confirm where she was at any given time. She, the last leader, hadn't been seen since the day of the Watanagashi. Was she still alive and well within the Sonozaki main house? Or had she, according to me on Sonozaki, she had fallen ill and was sleeping it off? I wonder if she's really sleeping. I'd like to take a look at her face and her pulse. You can say that again. The two of them breathed out a big puff of cigarette smoke. Oishi-san, about the search warrants for the Sonozaki main house and the Furude shrine. Do you think we'll get them? Oishi didn't respond, exhaled another cloud of tobacco smoke, his surrounding now as foggy as his mind. Alright, from the scrapbook 10. The Hidden Demon. The inhabitants of Hinamizawa believe that the blood of demons flows in their blood. As such, the character for demon is treated as very sacred. For example, usage of the character in names is apparently a right reserved for only the leaders of the Kimiyoshi and Sonozaki families. Case in point, we can see it in the current Sonozaki family leader's name, Oryu, <laughs> Oryu is written with the character. This and only this is proof that she is a legitimate leader of the Sonozaki family. In the same way, Mion Sonozaki, a successor, contains in her name, with me being written as. It also goes for Oryu's daughter and Mion's mother, Akane, who did not succeed her. It's known that before the disowning, Akane's name was actually written as, though it was changed afterwards to, still read as, still read as Akane. Incidentally, it's thought that the first character the mayor Ki Kiichiru's name originally meant demon, which can also be read as Ki. It should be said that names using the character aren't limited only to successors of the Sonozaki family. You can even find it in the last names of the three families. For example, their characters for Kimiyoshi are split up version of... If you write it in reverse and top to bottom, as it clearly resembles the character. As for the Furude family, who have been in the Shinto priesthood for generations, the word fortune teller can be written without interval characters as, I think that with the addition of the demon's horn, the tick on the top of the character, the bleak came the, that is used in their name now. In the case of the Sonozaki family where Sonozaki is written, I can't find any reference to the character, perhaps because it's already ingrained in their first names. They were the clan responsible for running the Watanagashi ceremony, so I think that instead of their, instead they included the contents of that ceremony into, into their last name. The Zaki and Sonozaki is a conjugation of the word for slice, and the Sono, written as, probably contains the hidden meaning of human body as its complicated mess, organs, enclosed by four sides. I think, in other words, that Sonozaki comes from those who slice open the gut. All right, finally, request denied.
I'm back. How did it go? Did you find any clues? The officers shook their heads in disappointment. Exhaustion was plainly showing on everybody's faces. That was only natural. None of them had gotten a wink of sleep since the day of the Watanagashi. Chief, let the youngest of us take a nap, then switch them out. We've got a long stretch ahead of us after all. Let's not push ourselves too hard. Rest up so we can take it easy as we go. I've been telling them to sleep in shifts. Nobody actually seems willing to sleep, though. Could you tell them yourself, Oishi-san? Oh my! You don't need to force yourselves. Komiyama-kun? Please, let everybody sleep in shifts, starting with the youngest. Komiyama-san, please do that. After the chief told him as well, Komiyama-san left his seat. So, chief, still no good on our request? It's just a rumor among villagers in the first place, you know. It's going to be difficult without more concrete evidence. Even when that evidence might be tucked away in there? We need the evidence that evidence is tucked away in there. Chief, don't start speaking in riddles to me now. We have witnesses that say four people, including the two who died, went into the forbidden ritual storehouse without permission. This is all reliable information. You might call it reliable, but they're really only rumors. They're not concrete evidence. Well, it's true that we don't have any pictures of the four of them sneaking in with cloth tied around their heads. Anyway, those four saw something inside the storehouse. Something important enough they'd be erased. Important enough that they'd be erased? What would that be exactly? That's why I'm asking for a warrant to go looking for it in the first place. Anyway, pointing out that the Sonozaki family's connections to violent organizations would be a major contender. Like a pile of Takarevs or a secret puppy or poppy production facility, the secret Sonozaki family of fortune would also be pretty difficult to discard. Look, Oishi-san, I know how you feel. However, that the storehouse is a sacred building belonging to the Furude Shrine, and we need to have proper consideration for the locals when dealing with it. I heard that there was an hour-long call made from Congressman Sonozaki to the big man. Chief, could he have nailed you back down? Anyway, as long as we don't have subtle... Uh, suitable evidence, we won't get a search warrant for the storehouse. That goes for the Sonozaki main house too. Especially considering that that's the jurisdiction of both Section 4 and the Prefectural Police's Crime P Prevention Division. We need careful preparations first. If you say we need preparations, then why don't you just let me talk to them directly? Shigechan is the head of Section 4, right? For crime prevention, it's <laughs> Yamo Yamomi-san. They seem like they'd be quicker to talk if I sat them down at a mahjong table. Ch Chief, you have a visitor. Um, yikes. Pushing the employee who gilded him, gilded him in, uh, in right out of the way was an old man who looked like a Yakuza member, giving his crested kimono and hakama. Did he not get enough of this over the phone? I'm Congressman Sonozaki. I demand to know who's responsible for this. This instant. He hello. I'm the, I'm the division chief, Takasugi. I don't need your name. I could have you demoted on a whim. You wouldn't even be enough. Bring out the one who called... The one called Oishi or whatever. He deserves punishment for requesting a search warrant of the sacred Furude Shrine. I sincerely apologize. Oishi is currently out on investigation. and He has been difficult to contact. I'll take his place and hear you out. So, so please, have a seat. The chief's eyes were secretly telling me to get out of here. Perhaps I'll gratefully accept this favor. Maybe I'll go lay down in the nap room. Listen here. The Verude Shrine spent 2,600 years under the Imperial calendar and 2,500 more beyond that. It is sacred, a sanctuary that must never be defiled. The 800,000 gods, Oyashira-sama, and the spirits of our ancestors are enshrined there. The Holy Shrine protects Hinamizawa from when the sun comes up to when it sits. So when it sets and from when the moon rises to when it falls. Who is the idiot who wanted to start, set foot in there? Besides, the right to religion is the most revered right of the people of, of this country in the Constitution. You dare, be so, you dare to be so bold as to sully that using your own investigation's negligence as pretext? I cannot, I will not allow it. Are you listening, you lying scum? I'm angry now, so you're not getting off the hook that easily. All right, and so with that, that's where I'm going to end this episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.